With the desire to create a groundbreaking product, Airbus made history when it introduced the A380, the largest passenger aircraft in the world, marking a turning point in the aviation industry. However, not stopping there, with the ambition to dominate the cargo transport market as well, Airbus embarked on developing the A380F, a colossal freighter version, second only to the Antonov and 225. Despite its ambitious goals, the program faced numerous challenges right from the beginning. So, what barriers did the development of this aircraft encounter? When will Airbus revive this exciting project? Ignoring some of the limitations, how could this Airbus aircraft have defeated the 747F? Let's find out! The A380F is a cargo version of the Airbus A380, announced as part of Airbus's ambitious strategy to dominate the long-haul passenger aircraft market and expand into the large-capacity freighter segment. Initially, this cargo aircraft was designed to complement the A380-800, with the ability to transport up to 150 tons of cargo over a range of 10,000 kilometers. Airbus hoped this cargo aircraft would directly compete with Boeing's successful 747F freighter series. This version was launched in the early 2000s and garnered interest from major customers such as FedEx and UPS, two of the biggest names in the freight transportation industry. This interest indicated that the cargo market might require a giant aircraft like the A380F to meet the large capacity demand. The fact is, the 25 aircraft were once ordered, including 10 from FedEx and 10 from UPS. However, despite initial interest, the A380F never came to fruition. By the end of the 2000s, all orders for this version had been cancelled, and Airbus's grand plan for a powerful freighter fleet with the aircraft had faded away. So why couldn't the A380F succeed like its sibling, the A380-800, in the passenger segment? Firstly, Airbus faced significant challenges in producing and delivering the A380-800 on schedule, as it was the most important aircraft for the company and had to be prioritized. The A380-800 was not only a point of pride, but also an important factor in Airbus's portfolio. In the past, the first freighter model was due to enter into service in 2012, but its production was suspended until delays on the more popular passenger plane could be settled. It was only after a few years of grinding through the backlog of sizable passenger A380 orders from the likes of Singapore Airlines and Emirates that Airbus quietly removed the design from its website and essentially shut down the program. Besides, the development costs of the jumbo jet exceeded initial expectations, causing Airbus to focus all its resources on producing the A380-800. This meant that Airbus could not allocate enough resources for other versions, such as the A380-F, leading to delays in the cargo version's production plan, which was eventually cancelled. Secondly, the A380 is an enormous aircraft, and for Airbus to commit to its production, they needed a large number of orders. However, the demand for the freighter variant of this huge aircraft from freight carriers was not strong enough to ensure it would be a viable economic project. Freight companies did not see the need to invest in such a large freighter like the A380F, especially with many other options available. The lack of orders led to delays and, ultimately, the cancellation of this cargo aircraft production plan. After reassessing the situation, Airbus decided not to continue with this version and instead focused on refining and enhancing the A380-800 for the passenger market. Thirdly, the cargo aircraft market is not an arena for Airbus to dominate. In this market, the Boeing 747-8F has held the advantage for a long time. Operators have been very satisfied with this freighter variant of the Queen, and they did not feel the need for change, especially when they were uncertain about the capabilities the A380F could offer. Although sales of the Dash 8F were not as high as previous models like the 400F, it was still a dream number for any Airbus cargo aircraft, and it still effectively met the needs of large freight carriers requiring high-capacity freighters. This left the huge Airbus freighter with limited opportunities to effectively compete against the established freighter series. Given the dominance of the Boeing 747-8F, do you think any other aircraft could realistically compete with it shortly? Next, although the A380F could provide an attractive platform for freight operators, its enormous size and operational complexity limited its applicability. This freighter was considered far less flexible than the Boeing 747-8F. Its large size, particularly its wingspan and height, meant that it could only operate at airports with specialized infrastructure, such as long runways and wide gates. 
In contrast, the more flexible Dash 8F could operate at many more airports, including those not designed to accommodate super large aircraft like the A380. Another important factor is the cargo loading capability of the A380F. The aircraft lacks a nose door, which makes it difficult to transport oversized or long cargo. In contrast, the 747 is equipped with a nose door, allowing it to easily transport a wider variety of cargo, especially items that cannot be packed neatly. This feature makes the Boeing freighter a more flexible choice for carriers, particularly when they need versatility in cargo transport. Finally, the A380F could not easily switch between different tasks like the 747. While the Boeing freighter can easily adapt its configuration for various missions, from freight transport to military or humanitarian support, the A380F struggled to meet such diverse needs. This flexibility is one of the key reasons why the 747-8F became the preferred option in the air cargo industry. Taken together, these factors created a significant gap between the Boeing freighter and competitors like the Boeing 747-8F in the freighter market. Not to mention its limitations, if this giant aircraft was built, it is unimaginable how majestic it would be. Of course, the A380F would have been the largest cargo aircraft in the world, aside from the Antonov and 225 Maria, which was the only one of its kind and was destroyed during the Battle of Antonov Airport in 2022. This freighter would have boasted impressive specifications in terms of cargo capacity and range. It was designed to carry up to 150 tons spread across three cargo decks. This capacity would be double that of some existing cargo planes, like the McDonnell Douglas MD-11F, making it an attractive option for cost-effective freight transportation. As a modern aircraft, the A380's fuel efficiency would help offset the additional fuel required for carrying such a heavy load, though not entirely. Additionally, the Airbus Super Jumbo Freighter would have had a range of 10,400 kilometers, roughly equivalent to the distance from Manchester to Cape Town. This would have made it highly suitable for freight carriers operating on Asia-Europe routes, flying from any European destination to major cargo hubs like Dubai, Hong Kong, and even Singapore from Eastern Europe. Although the Airbus A380F project never took off, the Boeing 747-8F emerged to fill the gap in the market that Airbus had aimed to serve. Earlier cargo versions of the 747 had proven popular, and at one point, they carried around half of the world's air freight. However, when comparing the two, the specifications of each aircraft are notably different. The Boeing Queen has a range of up to 7,630 kilometers with a capacity of up to 137.7 tons, while the Airbus A380F has a range of up to 10,400 kilometers with a capacity of up to 150 tons. It can be seen that A380F is more superior so much. Given that earlier versions of the 747 carried about half of the world's air freight at one point, do you think any other aircraft could achieve such dominance? Leave your thoughts below. Although the production capability of the A380F freighter version designed by Airbus is very low, there have been proposals to convert the existing passenger A380 aircraft into a freighter. For instance, several other aircraft, such as the Boeing 737, 757, and 767, have been converted into freighters, so it is not outside the realm of possibility one could exist as a retrofitted model in the future. This method is commonly referred to as a passenger-to-freighter, P2F, program. Such programs are becoming increasingly popular in the aviation industry because they allow for the extension of the lifespan of older aircraft while also meeting the growing demand for cargo transportation. However, for the jumbo jet, implementing a P2F program presents numerous challenges. One of the biggest challenges is the enormous size of the A380. While this design offers significant advantages for passenger operations, it causes serious logistical issues when the aircraft is used for cargo transport. With its unique two-deck design, loading and unloading cargo becomes more complicated compared to conventional single-deck aircraft. This not only requires specialized airport infrastructure, but also increases operational costs and cargo handling time. China once had plans to convert the large A380 aircraft, which was grounded during the COVID-19 pandemic, into a cargo plane, but this disadvantage obstructed that plan. One element that makes the A380 proud is now its biggest limitation in this segment. Additionally, the high fuel consumption and expensive maintenance costs of the A380 make it less competitive compared to smaller, 
more efficient cargo planes like the Boeing 767F or 777F. These Boeing aircraft not only consume less fuel, but can also operate easily at a variety of airports without the need for special conditions like the A380. As a result, these factors have diminished the appeal of converting the Airbus jumbo jet into a cargo plane. Moreover, although some companies have expressed interest in converting the A380 for cargo purposes, no serious P2F programs for this aircraft model have been proposed so far. Technical limitations and high costs have kept these ideas purely theoretical, without being developed into actual projects. In summary, while converting passenger aircraft into cargo planes is a reasonable solution to utilize old assets, the A380 faces too many challenges that make this idea difficult to bring to fruition. From its enormous size to its low economic efficiency, these factors hinder the potential use of this huge aircraft in the air cargo industry. The production of the Airbus A380 officially ended in 2021, marking the end of any feasible plans for an A380F cargo version. The manufacturing facilities and supply chains required to produce this aircraft have been dismantled, making any attempt to revive production virtually impossible. Additionally, the air freight industry has shifted toward fuel-efficient aircraft specifically designed for cargo transport. Aircraft such as the Boeing 777F and the upcoming Airbus A350F are becoming the preferred choices, thanks to their operational flexibility and ability to serve a variety of markets while reducing operating costs for carriers. These planes not only consume less fuel, but also meet the demands for diverse cargo transport capabilities and high economic efficiency. Moreover, Boeing has maintained its dominant position in the cargo aircraft market and will continue doing so, thanks to its robust product lineup and strong operator preference. Aircraft such as the 747F, 767F, and 777F remain mainstays in the freight industry, while plans for new developments like the 787F further strengthen Boeing's future advantage. This makes it even more challenging for Airbus to compete in this segment, despite its plans to introduce new models like the A350F. What are your thoughts on the Airbus A380F? Which freight carriers do you think would have the demand to operate this aircraft? Leave your comments below. Thank you, and wishing you safe travels always. See you in the next episode.